Good morning, everybody. Thank you uh, for allowing me to speak. Daniel, um, I've been invited back for the second year here to Zermatt to speak, which is uh, a real honour. Um, kind of parish announcements first. I'm quite a nervous public speaker, which is great, because I make really inappropriate jokes to try and get through. Uh, avoid eye contact at all costs. Um, my method of making sure, or thinking that everyone's naked in the audience is not going to work because my daughter sat at the back. So <laughs> there's the first inappropriate joke. Um, I'm going to talk about stress, which is great because I'm stood here shaking. This is me holding the, the uh, laser pointer steady. Um, so we're going to look at the uh, Yerk Dobson Law, stress workload versus performance. Um, all my jokes are going to be the same as last year as well. Um, a bit about me, I joined the army back in 1987, I joined the infantry, I spent some time in the infantry, I then got to fly helicopters, pretty basic at first, then they got slightly more advanced, and as time went on they got really advanced. Someone mentioned earlier about taking a knife to a gunfight, I was really lucky I got to take a gunship to a rifle fight, a gunship to a rifle fight, um, at the, the American Apache, which was uh, clearly a real honour to fly. Um, what we learned last year, um, your helicopter pilot should never look like this. He's too young, he's too pretty, he, he's going to kill you. Um, your helicopter pilot should be old, wrinkly, really disappointed when you meet him. Um, <laughs> not good looking at all. Um, and preferably in his 40s. This is uh, Tom Cruise in his 50s, just showing that life has been hard on some of us. As you can see by my wrinkles, uh, I said I'd get Thomas in the uh, presentation. So there you go, Thomas. Um, so that's the joke's over, um, on to CRM. This is a little bit wordy, but the point I want to bring out from it all really is the interpersonal communication, leadership and decision making. Uh, looking at the Yerkes, Dobbs and uh, kind of stress curve, uh, all the inappropriate jokes have been kind of stolen today about, um, well, so we're going to look at the bell and we're hopefully going to sit at the end of the bell throughout the whole of our uh, stress because that's where we're most optimum. Um, but going forward from there, it's all right just looking at that and kind of figuring out, well, what about the team? How does it affect the team throughout the whole mission? So what we've done is um, we're going to model it on what I'm used to, which is operating back in the UK. So fly the EC-145. Um, we carry a wrinkly old pilot and a paramedic. Uh, we've got a uh, co-pilot, so two pilots up front, captain and co-pilot, uh, paramedic and a doctor. Um, operating in the East Anglia region of England, it's pretty flat. It's nothing like here at all to be honest with you, but there is quite a lot of airspace, it's quite congested, operating quite regularly down into London, to the Royal London Hospital and other hospitals in London. Uh, we're based here in Cambridge and we cover right up to the North Norfolk coast, but it is quite flat. That was me trying to do the steady laser pointer again. Um, uh, same as by day and by night, so we operate in nearly a 24-hour service. We can land anywhere at night time. It's quite a lot of authority to give a pilot. I didn't have anywhere near that authority in the military. If I was going to land at night time in the military, I had to go there by day first, unless it was fully operational. However, we can land anywhere at night time in the region. So quite a lot of authority to be given to a pilot. Um, so we're going to look at the, that kind of stress bell, if you like, the Yerkes Dobson system. I've given this presentation a number of times now to paramedics, doctors and pilots, and we came up, came up with our own version of it. And the way I'd like to do it is just kind of go through a HEMS mission, the timeline of a HEMS mission, and look at the different stress points. Um, just to help me, um, I'd like to ask maybe some of you to speak during the presentation, just in case you thought you were going to switch off and relax, um, and just talk about what stresses you are to the scene. But we'll get to that point in a bit. So if you can start thinking about a time when you've gone to something, thinking, kind of, this is totally normal, I can totally cope with this, but something's pushed you over the edge. So just have a think about that as we go through the presentation. Uh, with regards to the stress and the optimal points, so we decided here's about normal. This is probably where we need to be um, focused and stressed and actually absolutely achieving our aim. And then we've got the overload point, which is really important to look at. Um, so incident, going through to call out, when we find out we've got a job and we get airborne. Um, straight away then, what we've put on is a pilot. So the pilot's in blue, paramedics in orange. Um, on the normal day, so it's a blue sky day in this example. So we've got airborne en route to our job and we're just doing everything normal, no problems whatsoever. To get closer to here, um, we could have poor weather. Uh, we could have poor weather at night time, we could have poor weather at night time and a new co-pilot that's never flown a mission before, so it's his first Envis missions. Um, poor weather, new co-pilot at night time, his first missions, and he's going to an RTC involving children. Straight away, he's going to be up here. And the point of the old wrinkly captain is you bring him back down and control him throughout the flight. But it's understanding, th the point I'm going to go on about the whole thing is understanding how other people feel during this mission, not just yourself. So we'll bring in the... Um, 
the, co so the um, paramedic and doctor. So we got very used in our system, very used to uh, isolating the guys in the back initially so they can talk about what type of job they're going to, um, dosages of drugs, uh, what they're going to do at scene, the dynamics at scene, and start discussing how they're going to uh, triage the patient. At some appropriate point then, we'll de-isolate, we'll all talk to each other, and we can do a bit of triage then about what type of hospital we're going to go to if we're down by London, and it's going to be a trauma job if we're going to go into London, or if we're going to return back to Cambridge and Adam Brooks Hospital there. So hopefully, we're, we're rising to the occasion, but we're not getting stressed out at this point. So arrival at scene, bit of a swap over. Um, pilots tend to drop off at scene. We've got to make sure we don't go down to the below the below the line because we'll just get on everyone's nerves and start doing stupid things. But we stay kind of reasonably alert, as you, and you can equate this to spare capacity. Um, spare capacity allows people to deal with the unexpected. Certainly as a pilot, that's how I treat spare capacity. Um, so we've got plenty of spare capacity and bandwidth to look at what's going on at the scene at the wider picture. That's why <laughs> another way to put it is the pilots drop into the good idea zone. Um, so where we're fetching and carrying bags from the aircraft, preparing splints and all this sort of stuff, and we got very used to that in our system. Um, the doctor and paramedic then uh, raise the game and get stuck in with the patient. Then there's a swap over, and actually um, talking to the guys and girls, they're saying, so you've got a big sick patient, but actually you've anaesthetized them, you've lo loaded them on board the aircraft, and that's the bit actually where the doctor and paramedic can become quite chilled. And actually, everything's under control. We know where we're going. We know what hospital we're going to. We know how long it's going to take us to get there. We've got plenty of drugs to keep the patient uh, well looked after. Us, on the other hand, uh, we could be going to London, and the stress levels go up. And um, personally, for me personally, smells in the aircraft. So any patient that's vomited <laughs> puts me right over the line straight away. I hate any kind of strange smells, uh, burn, burns patients, and all that sort of stuff. And this is the point I'd just like to pause during the presentation and kind of say, is there anyone in the audience prepared to stand up? Tell us who you are and just say what stresses you out, what's the things that takes you over the edge at scene. I know a lot of people say when they're dealing with kids, and if you've got kids the same age as uh, kids the same age as they're dealing with. But anyone prepared to kind of join in? Equipment failure. Yeah, that's a big one. Um, another one I've seen recently as well is jobs that weren't what they're supposed to be. So you've gone to a high-end job, and straight away uh, it's a low-end job, and people start throwing kit around, shutting doors in the back of the aircraft, slamming drawers and throwing kit around. Um, any more? Leah, my daughter at the back, what stresses you out? <laughs> a different patient. Sorry. Yeah, cool, yeah. My one, um, actually, and we've talked about the pilot drop-off and the Good Ideas Club, was a rollover RTC, three children and the mother. Um, two of the kids were kind of okay, bit battered and bruised, one kid unconscious, mum covered from head to toe in blood. She was absolutely fine. Um, and actually, she was falling, sorry, she was absolutely fine, as in not, not physically injured, but she was falling apart. And I decided, as a pilot, I would try and look after her, and it was just horrific. Um, as a pilot, I looked for a checklist, a uh, crying person, walk away. Um, <laughs> and actually... Um, the the, the co-pilot you saw earlier is Jenny, uh, and she's, uh, she's, she's now an aircraft captain uh, in her own right. She's an awesome co-pilot, and we flew into London with that patient on that day. And I tried to stay with the mother and talk to the mother the whole way to the hospital, and Jenny kind of did everything herself. Uh, she's a great pilot, great multitasker. And it was just one of those occasions where experience is something you get five minutes after you needed it. Jenny had had all the experience. She'd had lots of exposure to HEMS as a co-pilot, and she knew exactly what she needed to do. Okay, so we, we, we kind of head off to hospital, um, and actually, a lot of, lot of doctors say when they go into a big old hospital, uh, like Royal London, their stress levels go right up for the patient handover, and they're really conscious of the patient handover. Pilots dropping down again into the Good Ideas Club, unless you've got the mother that's crying, in which case I had to carry her down the stairs, or carry her into the lift at uh, Royal London, because uh, she completely fell apart on me, uh, which is a fair one. Um, so doctors kind of getting stressed and getting right up, um, with the stress levels. Then the patient's handed over and everyone kind of goes below the line and you have to drag them back up again because we've still got to get back to base. The most important bit is we all land back at base nice and safely so the pilots have got to get us home. The mission's not over till then. Um, the next bit, I don't want to be controversial on the next bit, but I'll put some lines up and maybe have a bit of a shout out. What's, what's my point? Okay, so very often, 
at scene, and we mentioned leadership earlier, highlighted in red, very often at scene, when you're dealing with land ambulance crews, as soon as we arrive, or they know we're coming, they get hems freeze, so they don't do anything at scene until we arrive, then as soon as we arrive, they drop off. And the best example I heard of this the other day, um, hems paramedic talking to a land ambulance paramedic, just wanted some nasal cannulas for the patient, so dispatched the land paramedic to get the nasal cannulas which he did, brought them back and put the nasal cannulas on the patient's chest, to which uh, apparently they're no good there. Sorry, I'm looking at doctors. Apparently they're no good there. And actually, um, this is where this presentation may help you in the future when you start to picture this at scene and understand that people at scene, land ambulance crews, will start to drop off. It's human nature. We've arrived. We've kicked the door in. Hems team's here. Can we help? Elbows out and start to get stuck in. The land crews will start to drop off. And it's where you, as a, as a good leader, you give really specific, inf specific information. Hold someone by the ears, get the nasal cannulas, put them in the patient's nose, turn the oxygen on. Give clear direction, be good leaders. This is human nature, not a reason to have a go at someone. So I guess my three main points um, today is stress can be good. The laser point has now got a little bit steadier. Uh, and I'm now on the good side of the stress. Understand each, each other's headspace. What's made someone more stressed? They've gone to see something they could totally cope with, but actually something's triggered their stress levels. And it may be dealing with a child, same age as their child. And we talked about good leadership. When people start to drop off, get them back in the fight. Uh, my favorite aviation saying, I just thought I'd put it up there, but it's so true. Experience uh, will give us spare capacity. Spare capacity will... Um, Spare capacity will allow us to deal with the unexpected. Um, if you are interested in CRM, this may be your first, first CRM presentation. Uh, this is a great book. He's the, he was the first Canadian astronaut, and he talks about uh, one of his chapters, Aim to be a Zero, and he talks about plus ones, minus ones, and zeros. That's really good. Grab us in the bar later, and we can talk about those. Uh, once you've started to talk about plus ones, minus ones, and zeros, you, everywhere you go, you'll look for these people. Um, and then if you really want to understand pilots, there's a good video on YouTube called The Failing Aviator. And actually, this applies not just to pilots, but any member of a dynamic team where you come home, you kick the door in and kind of go, the hero's home. Uh, where's my son? Give him one of them. Where's my daughter? High five. Even a dad who flies helicopter gunships can't be cool to his kids. Um, you're just a dad and be a loving dad. So thank you for listening. And I, I love you, Leah. <laughs>